The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. Uh, first, of course, we all want to mention Tony Heron, a uh, very unexpected passing, and apparently the funeral is next Saturday. Perhaps there'll be more information later on. Um, now, Dr. Manau has given two talks before, and I can assure you he has by far the biggest entry in Wikipedia of anyone who's ever given a talk at the club, so I suggest you check it out. Uh, he's one of the most well-known figures in Thailand for his bold and direct comments on various social issues in the country. I'm going to tell you, we would be game, I would be game to give a talk on what he's able to talk about. Regarding Buddhist meditation, he first practiced breathing since he was 12 years old and was involved in Buddhist activities in high school before entering Chulalongkorn University and was elected president of Buddhist Club of Chulalongkorn University in 1978 and has been teaching meditation since 1975. And he's actually going to kindly run a meditation session after this. It's going to last about 45 minutes. Who is in, oh, I need a show of hands for numbers, because well, it depends how many people we get where that he'll hold a meditation session. Anyway, who is interested in doing the meditation center? Okay, cool. Well, we'll confirm those numbers later. Looks like we might be in the meeting room. And now it's just going to go dark on them. Oh, here we go. Having graduated from the Faculty of Medicine, he became a monk as Metananda Bhikkhu, finishing all three grades of Buddhist monastic education. He furthered his study at Oxford University, majoring in Sanskrit with Pali and Buddhist literature. Further, he continued to in study at Harvard Divinity School and was awarded Master of Theology in Buddhist Medical Ethics, focusing on HIV AIDS epidemics in Thailand. Later, he continued his doctorate degree at Hamburg University, Germany on healing meditation. He disrobed in 2007 after publishing a book, After Buddha, wherein he used Buddhist principles of investigation and science in the investigation of the death of Buddha and its consequences, which stunt the Buddhist world. He was named the Galileo of Theravada Buddhism by Artit magazine, magazine? Artit magazine in Thailand. He wrote numerous articles on Buddhism, cultures and speakers in many forums worldwide and served as the advisor to the Secretary General of WCRP, Religions for Peace, the world's largest ecumenical organization working for peace for 20 years. Also, he has been active in reforming Buddhist monastic communities in Thailand. He served at Chivasong in Hua Kin, Thailand, as a spiritual advisor. He supervised the first hospice of Thailand at Maha Pijarala Kong Long Kong, I got that close, hospital, and serves as the president of Palliative Care Thailand Foundation. Currently, he is director of Gandhi Institute and vice dean for international affairs. College of Social Innovations, Rangsit University. Politically, and we've had elections recently, he is the Secretary General of the People Reform Party of Thailand. Please welcome the very eminent Dr. Manan. Thank you, Dr. Kingdom 
at uh, Super Thai, see such an ally kingdom. And then it expand, it became Yutia. And finally, Yutia was destroyed by the Burmese in uh, 18th century, and then King Rama the first started building Bangkok in um, 2025, and, and then start all over. Now, today is a special day for coronation of our Rama the 10th in Mahavajaran God. And today he's going to do two things. One is to rename all the members of the royal family. And second, he's going to sit on the palaquin with the circumambulate the inner part of Bangkok. And then he will sit three temples and that will start at four o'clock this afternoon. And tomorrow he will be open for public meeting for audience, diplomats in Thailand and finally for the people to see him on the surrender of the Royal Grand Palace that is happening today. <coughs> now history of Thailand. In 1782 we have the establishment of Bangkok, the Radhanath Gosin. Radhanath Gosin, uh, our new capital. And the the building of Radhanath Gosin is in fact the creation of Ayutthaya, bringing back Ayutthaya customs and and the palace ceremony or the protocol brought again revival of Ayutthaya kingdom to Bangkok. That was the the setting, the mindset of the people there by Rama the first. Then the greatest peak of popularity of the Chakri dynasty is in the reign of King Rama V. He was the most beloved. In the history of Thailand, Rama V is the most beloved as he has changed the country in many ways. He reformed the country, established new ministries and following the Western style and follow the British way of running England and the Commonwealth. That's how he did, and he abolished slavery for good. So the only king that we we have a holiday on the August 23rd of each year, that is the, the day when he passed away, Rama V. He did a lot of, of things during his reign. And then came Rama the Sixth, which was the, the time in Thailand entered into the First World War, and it teamed up with the uh, Western Alliance, United States, England, and helped sending troops fight in the First World War. And then the second, but because of <coughs> economic recession, it happened in 1930 brought Thailand into a brink of a economic collapse. Then there was a coup on 24th of June, 1932, which changed absolute monarchy into constitutional monarchy following that of England. That changed for good. Now, the people who did that, the coup was led by Mr. Preeti Manong Yong, who was the uh, a law student, he graduated from Sorbonne University and he was he believed in democracy and during his fight for democracy there he teamed up with a group of military then started a coup early morning on 24th of June 1932 with a small group of people who seized the power at that time King Rama the Seventh was in Bohin, Rayomon Palace. He stayed there, and then the coup took place early morning, and the king didn't want to have any bloodshed. So he agreed to bestow the power to this group of people, and that uh, reached a compromise between the palace and the people party. 
they call it the People's Party. But because the military was bad in the first place, politics in Thailand and military are wrong and in bad. So we have a lot of coups, 13 successfully, 5 aborted, and then we have these cycles, a vicious cycle of, of election and demonstration, and then coup, and then again, start the election again. And it happened like this for over 70 years. This is what we know. Now, what happened? We came to a time with uh, Mr. Thaksin Shinawan. He was the mobile smartphone tycoon. He set up AIS company and monopolized <coughs> the biggest mobile phone company in Thailand and got him a lot of wealth. He set up Thai Rock Thai Party and got a landslide victory that nobody had ever seen. And then he won that seat as the Prime Minister of Thailand. For the first time ever, we have the one person who sits in the, in the chair of Prime Minister continuously for four years. Very powerful guy. And then there was a time that in, 19, in 2006, it was the start his decline of power. A lot of protests pop up at that time, and on the 19th of September 2006, there was a coup, which took place and start and deposed him. And then he came back to Thailand once more time because he he wanted to be back in power again. After the coup, there was an attempt to uh, demo the Thai Rock Thai Party. And the new constitution was drafted, which was aiming to uproot Thaksin power. Then it was successful, but not for long. Thai Rock Thai was dissolved together with a few parties that, that aligned themselves with him. And then which is Thaksin, formed a party called Pue Thai Party and won and an election. Mr. Samak Sun Thuwe became Prime Minister. For a short time, there were a lot of protests. And then Mr. Samak, uh, somehow he died, and then Song Chai Wong Sawat became Prime Minister. Song Chai Wong Sawat was the brother in law of Mr. Thaksin. And that that was a difficult time because the yellow shirt protest against them. They occupied the um, house of the prime minister office, and Sun Chai could not run the country at all. So the yellow shirt uh, coordinator, the hardcore of them, were jailed. In, uh, in December. And then they were released just yesterday, five of them from prison, because of the occupation of the Prime Minister's office. Then the Red Shirt also campaigned against Mr. Abhisit Rechachiva, who came to power because of the Democratic Party. Then Abhisit became Prime Minister for almost two years. During the time, there was a lot of protests, and it happened in Pattaya here, when ASEAN meeting was about to take place. And the yellow shirt, the red shirt, occupied the whole city of Pattaya. They knew beforehand. And sabotage ASEAN meeting. That time, Prime Minister of Australia, from New Zealand, from uh, South Korea. They left immediately before they landed a plane here. And then 
the charge against those red shirt activists is going to come in a few months. And we're going to see what's going to happen. Then after our visit, a new election was launched and Yinglak Chinawat, who is the sister, younger sister of Taksin Chinawat, won a landslide victory. And the government lasts for about two years and again faced with charges of corruption in 2014. In the beginning of May 2014, actually it was the 7th of May 2014. She was found guilty of misuse her power to depost one of the uh, key figure in the Thai bureaucrat and the cabinet resigned to the paved room for 24th of May 2014 coup by Bayut Chan And General Bayut Chan at that time he was the commanding chief of the army and he set up NCBO. So the NCBO has been in power for almost five years. It's going to be five years on the 22nd of May this year. So NCBO work was this successful. So this is a kind of a brief up of Thai politics, the turbulent history, coup and democracy. It was the time of King Rama the Seventh, on twenty fourth of June, nineteen thirty two, and people some crown. He was a very powerful Prime Minister of Thailand who was very innovative and he changed Thai culture for good. During the time of people, it was a, a downfall of the monarchy. He changed culture of Thailand. When you go to the cinema, at this time you will see there's a royal anthem. But in the time of people, it was a national anthem. And his, his picture was projected on the screen. <coughs> no government office have the image of the king anymore during this time. And all the use of the court language died out. He changed Thai language for good. The word that we use for I and you in Thai language, it was invented in his time. In with the word sawadi. You know, when Thai greet each other, they get sawadi. It's a greeting used for all occasions. He invented it. And he invented Hat Thai noodles. Because in 1935, he changed the name of Siam to Thailand for good. He wants the country to expand and want to reclaim the land lost during the reign of King Mount V the French and the British back to power, back to Thailand again. So he created a noodle dish in order for Thai people to remember now the name of the country has changed. And very subtle, he manipulated people so they comply and they and they walk with him, they support him and he saw himself as the leader in democracy. Now he teamed up with Hitler, Mussolini, and Tocha in the Second World War and plunged Thailand in the part of the Axis and teamed up with Thailand declared war against the United States, England, and all the alliance and then support the Japanese. But Thailand didn't lose the war though, because of another fight, Zeri Thai helped set up government exile in Washington and helped the British fighting against Japanese here. And finally, when the war ended in 1945, Thailand was not considered part of the Axis and it's safe. At that time, people, uh, people Song Kham was, was put into jail that he supports 
the it was tried in the criminal court and then was found not guilty on technical term because the one thing the declaration of war was not signed at that time the one who's supposed to be the um, the signer of this document, the declaration of war, was pretty phenomenal. As he refused to sign it, it was no, there was no signature on the declaration of war. So this guy was free from prison. Biru came back again after the death of King Rama the Eighth. So King Rama the Eighth was the most of his time he was in Switzerland with his mother and his brother and sister. They stayed there for during the whole time of the Second World War and he came back to disarm the Japanese troops and Louis Mountbatten arrived in Thailand to disarm the Japanese and then he went back to study again in Lausanne. And he came back again in 1946. Then on the, the 9th of, of June, 1946, the king died. He was killed by a gunshot wound in his forehead. <laughs> the cause of his death was still unexplained. <laughs> but... <laughs> Rini Dom Yong was criminalized as the, the one who masterminded. And at the time, Rini Dom Yong has to plan to flee Thailand. Then, people so come, came back again as Premier of Thailand. This time, not so powerful as he used to be. But he was like riding on two tigers. One is Pao Siyanon and the other is Sari Tanarat. Pao Siyanon is the commander of the police force and Sarit Tanarat, commander of the army. Pao and Sarit were friends. They were cadets of the same class. And they, and Sarit went on the military side with Pao to police side. And Pao became very powerful, the most powerful director of police department until now. But during the time when People's Khan was in power, there was two coup attempts. One is called Manhattan Coup because the American government wanted to give a, a ship to Thailand <coughs> and then when they were transferring the ship to Thai government, the coup took place and kidnapped people when he was about to finish the ceremony. They capture him and then he escaped finally, but the ship was bombed by a Thai Air Force. People who survived and they came back to power again. The second one was called the Palace Coup. <coughs> then the, the, the Navy support Pridhi Phnom Yong to regain his power. And the palace coup took place in 1933, just two years later. But it was the most brutal slaughter in the history of Thailand. Sari <coughs> Tanarat took over and he never captured prisoner alive. So all prisoners who surrendered to him were all killed in the Royal Grand Palace on 27 February 1933, 1953. It's Sarit Then People's Sankram was trying to establish and come back as again elected Prime Minister in Set Up Radical Party. And in 1957, uh, an election was a, it was called the dirtiest election in Thailand. And then Sarit Tanarat made a coup and oust people's so crown for good. The regime that Sarit Tanarat brought to Thailand is real dictatorship, 
it lasts until October 1973. Student uprising. Hundreds of thousands of students all over Thailand gather at the Democracy Mon Monument during the time of Prima Shao and of Kitika John. And then it ended in riots and chaos. King Hu Yinhuan went out on television with the Supreme Patriarch, royal family, came up and tried to console the country and he appointed a new Prime Minister who was the head of Prima Council and the rector of Thomas Art University as a new Prime Minister. And they have a new constitution which lasts for a year. And then the election, the elected government didn't last for long. It came to another crisis in, 19, uh, in 1976, the October 6th uprising. A lot of students were killed at Hamasad University. There was the massacre in 1976. You can find it on YouTube, a lot of documentary about it. Then again, we have a government didn't last long, almost a year, a year or two. And then we have a general Prate in Sulanon. He became prime minister for almost eight years. He never ran for election, though. But he could organize all the blue party to listen to him, and they support him to become prime minister of Thailand. It was the coup on the 1st of April 1981. We call it April Full Day Coup. And it lasts for one day. Prem Tinasulanon escaped with the royal family to um, the Konrad Sima. And they surround the capital and capture all the coup leaders and put them in jail. Prem survived two coup attempts and he then stepped down. He put another person, Chai Chai Chunawan, as the Premier of Thailand. And Chai Chai won election and he left government that lasts for about two years. There was a coup again, military seized power. That time by Sujinda Krabayu and and his colleagues, they seized power in February 1991. Because of misunderstanding that Cha Chai is going to depose the head of the military. The Cha Chai never think about that. But the military thought that the cabinet was about to do so and charged them with corruption and then took power. Then Chai Chai was out in 1997 and then plunged Thailand into another crisis of power. So Sunda Kavayun accepted the position of position the Premier. In the beginning he said he would not accept to be Prime Minister of Thailand. But he changed his mind and he came back. Now the king somehow support him, but there was an uprising again in May 19, 1992. That time is another bloodshed in Thailand. We don't know why the military starts firing on people in the middle of night of May 17, 1992. And the cause of it is still unknown. But Sujinda was outpost together with David Jamong Simba, who was then was about to be, he was the political leader of, of um, Palangtang Party, and then then he was a point that he he was charged being uh, the one behind the violence. So his popularity popularity decreased immediately. 
và châm lon in stop he was a political activist as a member of another Buddhist movement called Sanyaso and he organized every campaign and the one behind the downfall of the taxi Chinawan and Zhang Long was free from prison yesterday one of the five people then we come to a recent struggle of the Saxon, Saxon downfall. King Lang became Prime Minister. She was charged of um, corruption in rice and project. She was found guilty and then she left now. In exile, joined her brother. And also her elder sister was involved and the three siblings were all abroad at last still at large now it was the first this was in May 2006 uh, September 2006 and again 22nd of May 2014 Taksin was charged with many counts. For example, he was trying to sabotage, to uproot the monarchy. And was behind the Red Church movement. He funded them. He wanted to change China to Republic. So that was a big crime. So this is um, the war we call the color war between Yellow Church and Red Church. It lasts for almost 10 years. And we still see the evidence of it. During the period of um, 2010, the Red Church started a lot of huge campaign and Bangkok was burned, many government house, the uh, provincial Governors were burned by the Red Church. More than 40 spots of fire started. So, new constitution was drafted under C in CPO, and now they changed the rules of election. The new constitution will not allow enable any political party to become majority anymore. It will be coalition party. So instead of voting with two ballot ticket, you have um, in the past you have one ticket for constituents for local MP and the other for party or party list MP. Now in the new constitution you have only one ballot ticket. You put, you choose, and when you choose, you choose three things with one ticket. That is first the constituent MP local, which is divided three three hundred and fifty. And second one is for the party. And the third one is the Premier, the Prime Minister, in one ballot ticket. And then the number for the winner of each constituent varies according to the number of the voters. And they calculated the number for how many votes that the the list of in the party will be MPs depending on the number calculated from the single vote. So it is calculated to be about 71 votes, 71,000 votes that you would have to get an MP in average in all constituents. 
then the problem arises. There can be more than two formulas for calculation. So the Constitution Court had accepted to prescribe what formula they're going to use for the new election. The new election, the result, the official result will come on the 7th and 8th of this month, that means the day after tomorrow, for the declaration, the official declaration of the constituents winner, who is to be in federal parliament. And on the 8th, the party list to be announced which party will get how many seats. That is about to be announced on the 8th of May. The official date that is prescribed by the Constitution is the 9th of May. The 9th of May. And they do it one day ahead. But what's happening right now is the the uh, Senate. There will be 250 senators, all handpicked by the NCPO. 70% of them were civilians. Some of them came because they were head of military, the chief commander, commander chief of the army, the head of the police department. They have their seat there already. But the rest, 30%, will come from government officers. 70% from civilians. The date we don't know yet. But on the 1st of May, we know that they have already prepared 250 names for the senators, already done. But on the 7th, this is going to pass to the king for the official entitlement. <coughs> then you pass to the king, then you have the seat. But right now, we don't know who will be senators. But we know that six cabinet members of the current government have resigned because they know they're going to be senators. So this is about to happen. So we don't know exactly what time the king is going to pass down his decision. Is to be approved these names or not. And that depends on the king himself. Now, yesterday, we have a royal coronation with this news in the, in the media around the world. And the coronation ceremony will finish tomorrow. And then political events will start again. So these are member of parties for the leaders and they are people who were in were news maker. We have Mr. Tanat Hoan Jing Wen Wen He is the head of the Future Forward Party. Very very much um, against monarchy. And he declared war on the monarchy himself. And I think, you know what? Yeah. Uh, I visit Mr. Jiva, who was a former leader of the Democrat Party. He resigned on 24th of May, of, of March, after the news of the fiasco of election, because he said if the Democrats won less than 100 seats, he would step down. And the Democrat won about 50 seats, less than 50 seats. The party lost all the MPs from Bangkok. Usually, the Bangkok will vote for Democrat, but this time, not a single seat. Abhisit declared that he would not support Bayutan Osa as Prime Minister, and probably that's the reason why the Bangkok people didn't vote for him. And we have Princess Uban Rat, who teamed up with the Parangsa Shard Party, 
and that was a big scandal on the 8th of February of this year. Cyrus Sajad was supported by Haksin Chinawat and wanted to put her name as the candidate for the Prime Minister and the party was dissolved. Just um, <coughs> at the end of February. So now the party is no more. So the third time party once believed to be the biggest party, they have won over um, they have won the majors majority almost the seat but not the popular vote. The popular vote was won by, by the Malang Kashara party, that's for Bayutan Osha. And so the Democrat Party is still hanging in the limbo. But Put Hai cannot form the government. They couldn't exceed 250. They have only 240 seats by teaming up with the Juristic Party and other parties. They couldn't. Now it's time to the Palang Bashara Party to support the Yudjan Osha. And they claim they have more than half of the parliament now. And they're going to declare that they're going to form the cabinet very soon. So this is the Still, because the number of seats won by the pro Prayut and pro Taksin are about equal. So what might be happen? That is the question that many times would like to know. What's about to happen? Will Mr. Prayut be Prime Minister again? or what happened with the election commission why so late in declaring the number of the MPs who won the election because in India you see one month of election they announced already who won in two days without one day of election it took us more than a month to declare the result in Indonesia it took hours to declare the result but in Thai in Thailand, it's more than a month now. Why they haven't declared the official result? That is the amazement of Thai politics. <laughs> so, what's coming is what we expect. We have Phum Jai Thai, we have Cha Thai Patana Party, Malang Shon PDRC Party. This going to support Prayut. But we expect, is he going to be Prime Minister again? And this is the, the candidate who is going to be Prime Minister. They submit the name as candidate. So in the roadmap of politics, what's happening is official announcement will be will become official before the 9th of May this next week. They will announce the um, constituent MPs by the 7th and the day after on the 8th, because on the 8th the constituent court will give us what formula to be used for the calculation of the MPs. Okay. And because of that, we would enable the formation of the, the House of uh, in Parliament, and then the Senate. And they have a meeting, they will elect the speakers of the House, Speaker of the Senate, and finally, the Prime Minister will be announced, elected in the parliament that's about to come. And we expect that to be 
in beginning of next month, June. So, that is um, my brief summary of what's happening. Whether Rayut is going to Prime Minister again, my answer is yes. Every poll said that he's going to be Prime Minister again. The matter is how long he's going to be sitting in the office. Some people say a year or less than a year because the uh, opposition party is still very strong. Who knows? But in the support of the Senate, 250 of them is going to vote for him, for sure. So, to be Prime Minister from a coup is not as difficult as going to step down. How is he going to step down? That is a problem. Once there was a coup leader who said that being a, uh, having formed a coup, being Prime Minister like a dog, stepping up on an expressway, finding nowhere to go, and vehicles are passing at high speed. So, the military at that time did not know much about politics <coughs> about the country. But Ms. Brayun has been in power for almost five years. He know what, he know who, and he knows when. And we saw in the picture yesterday in the in the televised ceremony of the coronation of the king that he played an enormous role in the coronation ceremony. He was the one who offered good wishes for the king to be in power and probably is going to be prime minister. Last week he was invited by President of China, Xi Jinping, about one belt, one road. So probably the Chinese government has recognized him as a new India of Thailand already. So that was it. Any Could I just remind you, just one question, only please, one question at the time. to be like his great-grandfather, Obama V. He wants to bring Thailand into a, another civilized country relative to this time. He wants Thailand to be seen as a democratic country, civilized, ruled by the law, no discrimination, and no use of uh, uh, any abusive power to any party. He was successful in portraying himself as being totally neutral to all political parties, not supporting anyone, and not in favor, not discriminating any political party. That is his success. And he was the one behind the rescue of the the uh, Wai Bo Academy in Chiang Rai last year. Without him, could be successful. He was successful in uh, being neutral and pushing law to take effect in dealing case of corruption. The Rebellion government, the office, 
we have no prime minister who was behind the anti-corruption lying at this time. A lot of politicians were put in jail, a lot have to flee, exile elsewhere. So I think that the role the king would like to follow the footsteps of his great grandfather and the law that has been issued to reform a monastic law and monastic administration took effect because of it. So last year, in the beginning of July, we have a new Buddhist monastic law. This is for good and help the country a lot. We have one. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Doctor. Uh, I think most of us Westerners come over here and we think, um, I know you talk about military, great presentation, and, and, and the Senate, and all these kind of things, but I have always been impressioned to say, the king says, this is what we're going to do. I'm the king. Not true. True? Not true. Well, he has a lot of power. He has no power? He has a lot of power. Yes. And but, he exercises power very radically, much more than his father. And he did that because of the popularity among the people that the people trust him. And he knew, that they, the people knew what happened when he exercised his power and to make law totally enforced. That's what he did. But officially, we don't see him support the Prime Minister. That exceed the the expectation of the people. But I think that he uh, sympathized with Bayut and the NCPO. And he wanted to get rid of Thaksin power in Thailand for good. But Thaksin is um, a phenomenon in Thai politics. It was very powerful and still very powerful. And a lot of people believed him. Uh, doctor. Yeah. Doctor. On your right, on your right, please. Sir, on your right. Yes. Oh, thank you. Is it likely, or will the king, do you think, spend more time in the country now? Because he's known to have spent a lot of time out of the country in past years. Do you think now he's made king, he would devote more time actually in the country? Um, very good question. I don't think so. The king spent about half a month in Germany, in Europe. He had three palaces, one in Germany, in South Germany, and the other in South of France, and the other in North of Italy. And, but he is very active and very well aware of what's going on in Thailand with the technology that we have. We have social media. He's very aware of what's happening all the time. So the order that comes, for example, with the dissolution of the Thailand Sanchar party was very active. He responded immediately after the news broke out that this is not right. So it was the announcement of the king immediately in the evening that uh, the princess Jula Khan was applied as the candidate for the premiership. <coughs> he responded immediately. And then it led to the dissolution of the party. At that time, the king was in Germany. And you see, when the wild boy academy were trapped in the cave in Chiang Rai, the king was in Germany. So, how he helped? Because of his help and his order, the premiers and many uh, cabinet, cabinet members went to, to 
administrate to solve problem at the site. And also there was a case when a, a Burmese boy was lost in the sugarcane field. And there were two regiments of the military to fly helicopters trying to find the boy. The boy was only two years old, but without the order of the king, they, the government would not take the case very seriously. And so in the south, we had uh, the case of big strong strike in the Hansi Tobara and southern provinces. They merely took a lot of action and that because of the order of the king. Immediate action. So we saw that. Nobody could make Rayud and his, his staff stand up and run things effectively. No one except one person, king. So the time spent outside and inside Thailand, I think there's no problem. Because he had a received report every day what's happening. And he solved the problem immediately, without delay. In the time of King Robert IX, we never saw this phenomenon that we saw many times happen here and now. So what I expect is we will see uh, active engagement of the government, of the cabinet, of different ministry in whatever cases that happen with the problem and the king take attention, take it serious, seriously in all the problems of people. That is good. And he helped people in the northeast and face the tropical storm. And then whenever there is any policeman, any soldier killed, the governor would come visit the family of the soldiers, take action immediately, without delay. So he used secret service intelligence in running the country and more than any other people in the past. Sir, on your left, please. Yes. <coughs> the previous governments so far seem to want to control the internet and has passed computer crime laws and has used censorship and it seems to be moving more towards the red Chinese model. And to me, the laws that they passed haven't just been to protect their current junta, but to be a way to move forward. How can the king, if the king believes it, how can he work against this? Because it seems like he signs all the laws, but all the laws are all very much determined by the government and pray it. So I, how can he move against this? It, se it seems like it's a very hard task. There's very good questions. But under the new constitution, every law is going to pass must be, will receive a public hearing. And the public hearing will have to be declared publicly on the internet before it was passed to the king. Like for example, the ecclesiastical law passed last year, get into the House of Legislatives, and then they have to wait for at least seven days to receive hearing from the people who will officially type their comments online and then go to the parliament again before the government approve it. So this is the protocol. I don't think that single gateway is applicable to Thailand, though. We have gone far beyond that. There was a dispute over the case about the law that controls security of the internet, but there was a lot of fake news. We tried to discredit the government, saying that they want to control, to preserve the uh, 
power of the junta. But finally, it was declared, and many um, news agents have said no. They will use that regime when there is a terrorist attack on on the central uh, information system of China, when they cause uh, damage to electricity, to internet, so that is the time when they use that, but not in general public. The government has no right to creep into any search on private information. So I don't think that the law that you have mentioned is applicable. There were news that the government was trying that, the Junta was trying to do that, but no, so far, as I heard of. But there's going to be another dispute is coming up on security law, which is debating in the House. Not yet come up, but still, if they want to declare it, they have, must have public hearing. Even they won in the in the parliament. The member of parliament vote for it, but they still people have to can voice their opinion on whether they agree or not. So we have room for for exercise of the rights of the people. So controlling the internet for the sake of the junta, I think I don't think that that could happen in Thailand. Maybe someday, but right now the 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 law doesn't allow it. And next month, when the prime minister is sworn in, the NCBO will cease to function immediately. No more military junta. But we have to see. Yes. You have any question? I'll come back to you. Any more first time questions, please? If not, there's another question, sir, on your left. First of all, I apologize for asking two questions. Uh, the king has a hard, there's two things I want to ask you. Number one, who approves the, uh, the, uh, uh, the respect for the king that we see in the movie theaters? Because I see a difference between the two, the two uh, chains, the major chains. And, and that's a minor question. Number two, uh, it would seem the king has a hard act to follow. His father was a wonderful king. So I just want to get a comment on that. It sounds like you think he will be gaining in uh, reputation through his deeds, etc. So I just wondered what you thought. Well, uh, Ramana IX was a very powerful and charismatic king of Thailand. Second to Rama V. But I think Rama X planned to be on and follow the footsteps of Rama V of his great grandfather. So we see that happening in many issues. For example, the law of ecclesiastical law, which was passed last year, and also the attempt that he helped citizens directly get involved directly behind the scene and show his uh, his active role. But if you keep this active and you want to do good to the Thai people, it will be done and achieve a great deal. Yes, sir. Over here. Uh, well, how do you see going forward the relationship between the Thai government and uh, the, the, encour the encouragement of visitors and retirees? Uh, do you see that uh, continuing or is it, it going to be made kind of tighter, tighter 
restrict the number of our retirees here? What do you think? I don't think that there would be a difficult time for ECPAT in Thailand. They will ease up the process for visa application to this country and other welfare that benefit foreigners who settle in Thailand. Um, I think that the government is very well aware that we have to promote tourism and long stay of people in this country. And I know there are projects which is happening in Chiang Mai and many other places that provide lodgement and facility, hospital services for people from the West and elsewhere. I think that Thailand still has um, a surface of challenges in the world of international relations. For example, United States and China. You have to balance that. But for sure, one thing is the relation between Thailand and China is going to improve, be upgraded further as well as relationship in Thailand and Russia going to be upgraded. I know that Rama the Pen is planning to visit Russia in near future. He's interested if anything can happen in Russia. And Princess Serinton is very popular in China. One of the ten because the Chinese recognizes her because she speaks Chinese fluently, fluently and she, she could write poem in Chinese. She could write Chinese, speak Chinese very well. And then going to be good time, better relationship in Thailand and China. Also with Japan, Thailand always see Japan as friend and going to upgrade the relationship. And the new ambassador to Thailand from the United States is coming. He is of Indian origin. So probably Trump has changed his mind to give another person and not to have a Caucasian to Thailand because of Asian origin work better. So things internationally, Thailand is still <coughs> trying to make friends with all other countries. But Thailand is cautious to trade with Iran and Turkey and don't want to do anything that is controversial. But the Thailand relation with China, United States is going to be in balance somehow. This is the strength of this country, getting friends, keeping balance with all major powers in the world. How we survive only through diplomacy, not with force. On your left, please, sir. Thank you, Doctor, for your presentation today. I've noticed that the uh, current Prime Minister has a rather <coughs> unusual power, number 44, that allows him to uh, almost make laws at will. Am I right in thinking this, this won't be passed on to the new Prime Minister? No, it won't. The NCBO will cease power, will cease to exist beginning of next month when the new covenant is formed. Whether it's going to be renewed or not, by, by the constitution, the NCBO will not exist. And then it will be the parliament who will decide a lot of legal cases and make law. And the, the people will have more role to like, play in the politics this coming. 
that is a good news. But we will have a, a weak government, not as strong as it was. The, the court will have a lot, still a lot of power. More than ever. Doctor, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned in your presentation that the Thai government supported Japan in World War II, yeah. and yet the Japanese army killed tens of thousands of Thai people. So how did they continue to endorse that support? Of, I'm not sure that the Japanese killed a lot of Thai people. There were prisoners of war from Malaysia and Singapore and Australia that were killed by the Japanese. The Thai benefit from relations between Japan and Thailand more than other country during the Second World War. And some um, millionaires became very rich because of the trade with Japan. And Japan has made agreement with Thailand that will not uh, force the Thai to do anything unless they're willing to do so. So, we suffer the least in Southeast Asia during the Second World War. And we were not taking as the, we don't have to pay for um, any money to US or to um, other countries in the West, even to England, or what happened, and the declaration of war was declared uh, void and nil by the court. So we didn't lose the war. Although, we did, in the time of people's song crown, he literally supported the Japanese. And the Japanese saw Thailand as friend. And they were in the used Dortmund airport for the fighter aircraft to use for the bombing of Prince of Wales <coughs> and uh, in the repulse. The two warships in Southeast Asia <coughs> they flew up from Dortmund airport and destroyed the two ships. But I don't think that the time would kill that many. Maybe. Ten, but not hundred. But a lot of Japanese killed the Singaporeans and Malaysian and Chinese. They built the um, the railway, the um, the railway, the bridge along the River Kwai. It was built majority by the Chinese who lived in Malaysia and Singapore more than any other country, more than Australian, or the British, or American captured. The Chinese died 10 times, even 20 much more. But their names were not recognized. But hardly the Japanese killed time, very much. So at the back, Very, very excellent talk, as usual, Doctor. Thank you. Uh, what, do we, what do we know of the health of the king? The, the health? Yes. I mean, is he in good health? Does he have yeah. problems? Now, how long is he going to be around? I think he's in relatively really good health. Maybe healthier than me. <laughs> so, he cycles for hours and hours. And last, a few months ago, he his bicycle around the Suanabung Airport, which open for cycling. You can also apply to buy, ride bicycle there. You can run if you like. And the king did that himself. So I think his health is in good shape. 
Doctor. Doctor, thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Uh, the, the political scenario which you have described and defined to us with the history that follows. I have two questions that come into my mind. The first one was yeah, one question, but two sectors. <laughs> uh, the first one is so how is the political scene going to help the economy of Thailand and how is it going to cut the corruption in Thailand? Good question. The economics, I think Thai economy is no longer based on agriculture. We produce cars and a lot of cars exported to other countries in Thailand. From, from Japan, they built uh, many plants here for car building, uh, car manufacturing. And also we have a lot of investment is coming from EU, the United States. And we are somehow industrialized country in a way, a new one. And I think the economy is going to step up. Not very fast though. The growth will be about 4% this year. 4%. The agriculture we will suffer because we have a drought that hit northeast of Thailand already quite severely, but in any other, other years before. And the produce and the farming will not be as good as last year. But they compensate that with tourism. They try to promote tourist industry in this country. So Visa on arrival will be more or popular in this country and many countries will not have to get visa here to come to Thailand anymore. The Chinese for example, now all the visa are waived for Chinese. And then because Chinese tourists outnumber any country in Thailand and we see more uh, favorable offer of the Thai government through the Minister of Tourism and Sports. They're going to do that for sure. So economically, this is one way. Corruption, it depends on how you check and balance it. We cannot eliminate corruption entirely. It's a part of the culture. And because of nepotism and colonialism is rooted in Thai culture everywhere. But we have to check and balance with the use of social media. It cut down all corruption cases. And because of Facebook, Line, Instagram that broadcast news of any wrongdoing, it already cut down corruption cases. And with the new constitution, that allow people to take part in it. I think corruption case is going to decline. Maybe 10%, maybe more. It depends on the, the law, the enforcement of the law by the government. Yeah, Doctor, uh, one question for me. Were you surprised that your king uh, got married again for a few days, and we're, <laughs> we now have a new queen. Yeah. It's a surprise at all. <laughs> I only knew about the marriage and appointment of the queen on the day it happened. So, not only you are surprised, we all are surprised. <laughs> but it's the court. It's good that he has the queen. And I think she's a good, good girl, also. Come on over here. Uh, thanks for an excellent presentation. Now, one question: What is your view on the exchange rate of the Thai bar? I'll give you a quick example. Australia has lost twenty-five percent 
against uh, the Thai bar. Uh, five years ago, you got for one dollar about 30 bar, now 22. So, what's your view? I know it's uh, out of the left field, but uh, do you have a view on the future of the currency? Because Thailand has a surplus, a tried surplus, henceforth that is reflected in the exchange rate. So, do you have a view on the exchange rate, let's say, for the next two years? A very good question. I think the, the Thai currency is too strong. And that is because of the, the stock market and the trade that we have and relative to other countries. Is it good to have a strong currency? I don't think so. And I think uh, Thai baht, if it's, the value is is lower than this, uh, maybe 33 baht to a dollar, that would be appropriate for Thai economy. But right now it's too strong and not very good for, for tourists, not very good for the um, import. It's good for export. It depends on many factors and about the policy of the country and how it's going to run. And the Bank of Thailand have to set up strong policy against it. But also, I never see that the Bank of Thailand has a very tight control of the currency or interest rate. We haven't made it, uh, we haven't liberalized the banking system in this country like other countries. So we still under control of the Bank of Thailand. But how? We have a lot of reserve, very strong, in dollars. But soon I think the, the using of dollars, of US dollar, will be less and less popular. More countries will switch to gold standard. China, India, for instance, they will turn to gold instead of using dollars as deficit. I think we're going to see the trend happening right now. And I think uh, US government has to be very careful in international diplomacy. What's happening to Iran, what's happening to, to Libya, what's happening in Syria, what's happening in Venezuela, that will affect the world economy, of course. Yeah. <coughs> Doctor, thank you very much for your presentation. I'd like to bring up a, a different subject, but one that's really important to all of us right now, and that is it's a dual subject, sea level rise, climate change. Climate change, we're getting more storms coming into the northeast affecting agriculture. Um, Slide, landslides, floods. Uh, we've had a huge heat wave here recently, uh, much worse than I've seen in, in many years here. Uh, Bangkok is one of the mega cities in the world that can be absolutely devastated by sea level rise. How is the royal family and the government going to address these really, really important issues for Thailand? They have been planned, and the government have been thinking about it but they didn't declare the public. They plan to help the environment, the reduction of uses of fossil fuel, and use to alternative energy like, like a sunlight, wind. But I think that will not come very soon. But they have planned. And it's included in it the 20 year strategic plan of our youth. And we want to save Thailand for any national disaster. But two things that are very important is the uh, disaster relief program must be done very, very soon. And I think that they're going to build a, a rescue unit that help not only Thailand, but ASEAN as a whole, very soon. 
And Thailand couldn't do that alone, but to push all the countries now seeing to work together for climate change. That would take some time. But in 10 years, I think we could achieve it. And the use of carbon credit to change the environment will come very soon. And they're planning to, to plant millions of trees in this month and using the occasion of the coronation of the king to promote environmental um, control and healthy environment to come. And uh, that, that works with the mentality of Thai people. But they don't be clad because they don't want people to get panic. And rumors in Thailand spread very far and wide. So they know very well. But in the plan, there is. So we sort of run out of time. On your left at the back, we have one more question here. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, sir, thank you for the presentation. Um, in the last 50 years, which government do you think was the best? The best? Uh, the most efficient or whatever? Well framed uh, leadership is the best, I think. He was trusted. 100%. Yeah. General Frame. He was honest. Yes. And he meant well to the people. He didn't corrupt. And he was trusted by Rama the Nine, the friend in the Sulanos. During this time, he brought Thailand to become a new industrial country. Until the coup brought him down in 1991. Sadly. Thank you very much, sir. I hope we can find the time to come back again soon. Very good.